Today I'm reviewing the Radio Link 8010 This radio has a really nice colour LCD display and is very simple to set up. Here is my trusty Tyrannus, which runs the OpenTX software. Now, OpenTX can be a blessing or a curse, depending on your point of view. Very, very flexible, but for some people, just much too complicated. A little while ago, I also reviewed this Radiolink transmitter, the T8S, and people complained that, well, the only way to set this up is using an app on your phone. Uh, it's the ideal transmitter for taking on, on holiday or putting in a backpack. But if you want to be able to program things directly, then you need something like this. This radio then is designed to compete with the likes of Futaba. It has the usual plethora of switches, uh, some two-way, one spring-loaded there at the back, three-way switch there some variable inputs there, additionally on the side here and here. So a full complement of switches and buttons that you can play with. This being a 12-channel transmitter, maybe for something like a, a complex ship model with all sorts of functions on it, uh, this would be ideal. It has a really nice colour display on it, which is visible even under my video lights here. That's a good thing. The basic front display then shows you the type of model that you have assigned, various timers that you can configure. It will show you also the receiver voltage and optionally the external voltage. The kit comes with a telemetry module which I've installed in my Stunt King plane and I'll show you that later. Pressing the mode button takes you to the basic menu where you can select all of these things here and to navigate you have a little toggle button here and to access the individual menus you just press and hold down and then to change the various parameters you have the scroll wheel here you program in your own username there and set the various alarm voltages to come out of that you just simply press the end and then end again takes you back to the front screen another screen that i like if we press and hold is we get the servo menu and this is a very nice graphic display of all of your stick movements and various switches that you can assign to different channels. For the Stunt King model I'm also using the Radio Link BIME D which is a flight controller for Delta Wings or Elevon mixes and that needs channel 5 and channel 7 programmed to switches. Channel 5, the three position switch here and that selects the various modes and channel 7 is used as a throttle lock or motor stop. The throttle conventionally being on channel 3, channel 4 there, the, the rudder. As a mode 2 transmitter, completely normal. You can optionally buy it in the mode 1. I rather like this fetching orange colour. If you wish to be more conservative, there is also available the traditional grey and silver type case. The kit comes with this 12-channel receiver, has the connection here for the telemetry and the conventional 12 servo attachments there. Optionally, you can also make it output SBUS. The LED here will show you the status. Also on the receiver, this is the little button to bind the receiver and also change between the PWM and SBUS mode. To power the transmitter, this little battery box is supplied with a GST type connector. You can put your conventional AA batteries in there. What I've elected to do is just to put a little three cell pack in here. This will take up to 4S, again with the GST connector just plugged in there. It does say in the manual that it has reverse polarity detection on there, and no, I'm not going to try it thousand milliampere hour battery should be more than adequate for most purposes. The transmitter itself taking only some hundred milliamps. Also note that the instruction manual that comes in the box is only an introductory guide. 
although it's sufficient to get you going when you're setting up things like some of the glider modes you're going to need the full manual you can get that from the radio link site and you can also conveniently just scan this little barcode on the bottom that'll take you directly to it receiver binding in the radio link world is really straightforward none of the usual messing around of trying to hold buttons while you plug the power in you can do it with the power on we can see then that we have a solid red light here all we need to do is to press and hold the little button down until that starts to flash and then wait once it becomes solid again the receiver is now bound to the transmitter uh, if i move my aileron servo or elevator servo then we can see that that's all functioning correctly just one thing to be aware of though there are receivers available with fewer than 12 channels and we need to change a parameter on the radio to be able to bind those long pressing the mode go down to the system menu and here at the end we can choose 12 or 10 channels in my other model I'm using a 9 channel receiver so I'm going to put that down to 10 and we just exit those screens and we should be good to go with the binding process out of the way then I'll show you the setup of the radio and the BIM flight controller in my Stunt King model the installation then in this old model is quite straightforward. Fortunately there was a large area I had to 3D print this cover for. Uh, quite neatly the receiver that I'm using, which as I mentioned is the 9 channel RDS, fits neatly alongside the BIME module, which is this little guy here. And I have a, a couple of videos about that uh, explaining some of the mysteries thereof. As far as I'm concerned it works extremely well. The other thing to note on the receiver here is the connection to the telemetry unit to send the main battery voltage back to the transmitter. The only other connection then is on the bottom there the S bus output. So when I power the model up you'll see instead of being red this will be a sort of bluey magenta type colour to indicate that it's in S-Bus mode and very importantly always remove the propeller when you're testing anything on the bench. Just before we power it up if I take the battery out for a moment you can now see the supplied radio link telemetry unit for sending the battery voltage and that simply connects via the balance cable to the battery as you can see there and that cable going back to the receiver. So that neatly tucks away under the front there, making sure now then that my transmitter is turned on. We make the model live. The beeping there indicates that the throttle cut is in action. I have the switch here assigned to the throttle cut. So if I now arm the model, you can hear it uh, beeping with the cell count there, and now the throttle will be active. Good job there's no propeller. That then works very well. At the moment it's in the BIME manual mode, so there's no, no gyro input going on. Now you can see the uh, ridiculous amount of throw that's on those control surfaces really need to do something to calm that down. Flipping the guy over then we can now see as I mentioned the bluey magenta light showing it in S-Bus mode. Tuck that neatly away. The green lights there indicating the phase or direction of the attached servos to the BIME unit. There's not much more I can tell you now. It's a fairly conventional setup. I'll just end the video by showing you some of the flying footage my last outing. Another outing then with the Radiolink 8010 II. I've made some modifications to my aircraft now, changed the battery, and we'll have a fly and see how we get on. 
Which way is the wind going? Over there. Wind's coming slightly towards us. Yeah. Unusual. Do you want, do you want a hand with that? Or are you okay? Uh, I think I'm okay. We'll find out. <laughs> Hopefully, she should take off in a slightly less distance than before. So we take off there in the in the gyro mode. So the, the gyro is keeping it nice and steady. Slow get it down there. So the BIMD gyro is doing its job. Uh, the issue with the fluttering is purely to do with the airframe and the control surfaces. I'll have to try and figure out some way of sorting that. Otherwise, very happy with the way it's flying. That concludes then my overview of the Radiolink AT10 II and its surrounding ecosystem. You've seen the transmitter, the various receivers. They also do a much smaller one for mini quads and also flight controllers. If you're unfamiliar with Radiolink, there'll be links in the video description to all of the products. If you're looking for a new transmitter or you're new to the hobby, definitely worth checking them out. Thanks for watching.